In 1977, the people of Catalonia celebrated the traditional day of Catalan solidarity. It was the first time they'd been able to do so since Franco came to power in the 30s. One and a half million Catalans came into the streets of Barcelona to assert their wish for autonomy. It was hardly an extremist minority. Most Catalans feel deeply their right to some form of self-government, and they have expressed this feeling many times in their past. In 1931, Catalonia declared itself an independent republic. It set up its own government, the Generalitat, and a statute for autonomy was drawn up. The new republican government in Madrid approved the statute the following year. Under its president, Maciá, Catalonia was officially autonomous. It was not to last long. the Civil War. Barcelona was one of the last strongholds of resistance to Franco, but in January 1939, it too fell to the nationalists. The siege of Barcelona was effectively the end of the Civil War. Thousands of Catalans fled to France, in the months that followed, many Catalans, including the Prime Minister, were shot. Under Franco, there followed a rigorous and systematic repression of everything that was Catalan. It was not the first time a Spanish ruler had come into conflict with Catalonia. In 1640, Catalonia declared itself a republic under French protection. It took the Spanish king 19 years to force Catalonia into submission. In the 18th century, Catalonia again resisted the Spanish, siding with Spain's enemy, the Habsburgs, in return for their support of Catalan autonomy. 40,000 French and Castilian troops laid siege to Barcelona for 13 months before it gave in. In the 19th century, Catalan uprisings against the central powers of Spain were sparked off a number of times. In 1842, Barcelona took up arms against the dictatorial regent, General Espartero, who retaliated from the heights of the fortress on Montjuic, bombarding the city into submission. And in 1868, Catalans rebelled against the monarchy, burning portraits of Queen Isabel II. If Catalonia was not always the only region to rebel, it does have a long-standing tradition of resistance to the central powers of Spain. Senator Josep Benet, a historian and leading Catalan politician, explains why. Bien, hay unas razones muy evidentes, que es que Catalunya es un pueblo con su lengua, con su tradición histórica, con su cultura, distinto, totalmente distinto, del pueblo que ocupa el centro de la península y que domina la política del Estado español. Son dos pueblos distintos. ¿En qué forma se definió Cataluña como nación? Bien, según el historiador francés, el eminente historiador francés Pierre Vilar, Cataluña es uno de los pueblos medievales en que más pronto se manifestó esto que hemos llamado modernamente el Estado-Nación. Fue una, un pueblo con un gran sentimiento nacional ya a la, a, la, a la Edad Media y adoptó enseguida unas fórmulas uh, lo, muy aproximadas a lo que sería el Estado moderno. Catalunya, one of the earliest forerunners of the nation state in Europe, with its own particular language, culture and history. The closeness of Catalonia to the rest of Europe has been largely responsible for these differences. In the 8th century, the Muslims dominated most of Spain and part of France, but their influence on the language and culture of Catalonia was less than almost anywhere else in the peninsula, because they only stayed for 90 years. In 801, the Franks under Charlemagne drove the Muslims back out of northern Spain. For the next two centuries, Catalonia was part of the Frankish kingdom. While the rest of Spain looked south to the Arab world, Catalonia looked north to Europe. It was now that the Catalan language was born, 
spoken on both sides of the Pyrenees, it was closer to the Latin dialects of southern France than to those of the peninsula. With the decline of the Frankish Empire at the end of the 10th century, Catalonia became independent, but it never lost its close ties with Europe. Catalonia shared in the European movement of Romanesque art in the 11th and 12th centuries and contributed a highly individual style of its own. Catalan Romanesque art was a rich and vital expression of Catalonia's emerging identity. Politically as well as culturally, Catalonia was developing its own identity. From the time of its earliest independent rulers, Catalonia began to evolve a sophisticated form of government based around the court in Barcelona. The king ruled by the consent of the court and was bound to observe all statutes and laws they had agreed. He was one of the earliest forerunners of the constitutional monarch. With the creation of the Generalitat, this system was formalized. The Generalitat was the earliest Catalan parliament and its function was to approve or disapprove of measures proposed by the king. The whole feudal system in Catalonia was sophisticated and nothing else like it existed in Spain. Becoming stronger and more stable, Catalonia began to assert itself abroad. Under James I of Catalonia in the 13th century, Mallorca, then Valencia were conquered and in the 14th century, Sicily and Sardinia, and later, Naples. Catalonia's power was not just military. It became the most important trading state in the Mediterranean, with Barcelona as its commercial centre and port. The Gothic quarter of the city contains buildings which reflect its wealth at this time. In the Middle Ages, Barcelona was one of the finest and richest cities in Europe. But Catalonia's strength and prosperity were not to last. In the 15th century, its population was decimated by a plague, and it lost its military and commercial power in the Mediterranean to the Turks. Under Ferdinand and Isabel, Castile became the most important power in the world because of its discovery of America. But despite Castile's dominance in Spain from then on, it never properly assimilated Catalonia. Why not? Cuando llegó el descubrimiento de América, el descubrimiento de América pasó a ser patrimonio de la corona de Castilla, excluyendo a Cataluña. La corona de Castilla estaba formada por una serie de estados, entre los cuales se contaba naturalmente Cataluña. Y Castilla se reservó para sí exclusivamente el poder y el comercio para América. Esto hizo que durante una serie de siglos los catalanes no pudieran ir uh, no se podían trasladar a América, no podían ir a poblar América como tantos otros ter, pues, uh, person, personas de otros territorios del de Estado español se trasladaron a América. Por otra parte, Cataluña había perdido prácticamente el comercio en el Mediterráneo, en gran parte a consecuencia del dominio de los turcos. Y fue un pueblo que tuvo que encerrarse en sí mismo. Entonces tuvo que buscar fórmulas de vida en sí mismo. There are strong historical grounds for the Catalans' claim to some form of autonomy, and this feeling is not restricted to any political party or social class. Catalans have a sense of solidarity as a people, with characteristics that make them different from other Spaniards. How do they see themselves? ¿Cómo es el carácter catalán? Tranquilo, apacible, trabajador. El catalán, pues es sincero, Simpático, agradable, trabajador, eh, franco. Tradicionalmente ha tenido un carácter de quizá un poco cerrado, de 
con un amplio espíritu comercial y sobre todo progresista, digamos, en el sentido de más cercano a Europa que el resto de la península ibérica. ¿Es usted catalanista? Sí, señor. ¿Es usted catalanista? No, en absoluto. ¿Es usted catalanista? Pues sí, señor. ¿Por qué? Pues soy, no sé, no le puedo decir, me siento catalana y me gusta mi idioma. Uh, bueno, yo soy catalanista, es decir, me siento catalán. Creo que Cataluña es una nación que es uh, necesario que sea respetada como tal y que... Uh, Después de tantos años de haber estado sometida, pues tiene ya el derecho y el deber de realizarse como nación. ¿Es usted catalanista? Pues sí. ¿Por qué? Porque lo siento. Creo, creo en el porvenir de Cataluña, creo en la historia que hemos tenido... Eh, me he dado cuenta de infinidad de injusticias que hemos padecido y creo en el resurgir del país. A sense of past history is important to Catalanist feelings, but the most important thing is the sharing of a common language. 70% of the population speak Catalan, and for 50% it is their first language. Under Franco, people were fined on the spot for speaking it in public. Today, it's the language of the street once more, both spoken and written. Vale. Si no sortís bé o algo, me puedes tornar de confianza. Sí, 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 sí. The use of Catalan is not confined to any social class or any situation. Catalan is the language of the local market and of the expensive shop. Catalan is now the official language where regional matters are concerned, in government administration and in the state-run radio and television system. Muy buenas tardes, señores y señores. La noticia más importante del día, sin duda, es la reunión que han mantenido fins hace unos instantes al Salón de Cent de la Casa de la Ciudad los miembros de la Asamblea de Parlamentarios de Cataluña. D'altra banda, avui ha estat reunit també des de les 10 del matí el Consell Executiu de la Generalitat. A veure, càmera... Un text informatiu que fa referència... Càmera 2 a bacs, càmera 2 a bacs. Podem destacar també les importants modificacions en l'organigrama... Fins a bacs, no? Aquests són temes dels que ens ocuparem... With the revival of the Catalan language has come a resurgence of Catalan culture. But memories of repression linger on for painters like Tapies. and Guinovat. Today, many of Spain's most important artists are Catalan. The great Catalan artist Joan Miró designed this record cover. Catalonia produces many of Spain's best popular musicians. Catalan theatre is the most active in Spain. Theatre companies provide popular as well as serious entertainment at the yearly Barcelona Festival. The liveliness of Catalan culture is a powerful factor in Catalan's feelings of solidarity and uniqueness.
Catalonia has always been one of the most prosperous regions of Spain, and economic factors have considerably strengthened its desire for autonomy. In the 18th century, Catalonia was the first part of Spain to become industrialized, and this in itself created tensions with the government in Madrid. Esta industrialización provocó una diferenciación aún mayor del pueblo catalán del de pueblo castellano, que el pueblo que dominaba el Estado. En Cataluña no solamente se hablaba un idioma, había existido una cultura distinta, sino que además se formó esto que llamamos la sociedad industrial. En Cataluña apareció una burguesía industrial, en Cataluña apareció un proletariado con todos los problemas nuevos que eran desconocidos del resto del Estado español, eran desconocidos del centro. Y esto diferenció, de, llevó a una gran diferencia entre un pueblo y los otros. Aumentó las diferencias todavía la industrialización. The new industrial working class felt that the Spanish government was so remote it could never understand their problems. The workers reacted by rejecting the whole political system. The left-wing movement that was born had strong anarchist tendencies, and this radical tradition was an important factor in Catalonia's hostility to central power during the next hundred years. But the government was no more aware of the interests of the new middle class. Esto provoca una serie de problemas muy importantes en el Estado español, problemas que se pueden comprender si tenemos en cuenta que Cataluña es el único pa país de Europa en que eh, se realiza una revolución industrial y en cambio la burguesía que nace de esta revolución industrial, esta burguesía industrial, es la única de, de toda Europa que no llega a acceder al poder. Es, entonces queda marginada, continúa siendo marginada del poder. So the industrialists disliked the central government just as much as their workers did. They supported and encouraged the autonomy movement, even if mostly for reasons of economic self-interest. Most industrialists in Catalonia today still support some form of autonomy. Corbero is a large manufacturer of domestic electrical appliances. Its vice president is a strong supporter of autonomy. In what ways does Pedro Corbero think Catalonia has suffered under a centralized regime? Yo pienso que ha sufrido en un doble aspecto. Un aspecto económico y otro aspecto político. En el aspecto económico el país catalán ha estado muy condicionado al poder económico del Estado español porque aquí en Cataluña no habían unas instituciones o no había esta mentalidad de, o la base de unas empresas financieras potentes y que podían dar ese soporte. En el campo político es porque todas las decisiones que afectan, y indudablemente muchas, afectan al empresariado, concretamente al empresariado catalán, se tomaban o se toman en Madrid con poca participación del mismo, the Catalan industrialist wants autonomy partly because it makes for more efficient business and partly because he wants Catalonia to benefit more directly from its own profits. Principalmente lo beneficiaría en, en el orden de todo un aspectos de servicios uh, no ligados íntimamente con la empresa. Principalmente esto. Indudablemente a, al país catalán nos preocupa que sabemos que solamente una tercera parte de la renta que Cataluña da al Estado español revierte en Cataluña. Esto nos hace prever y suponer y realmente tenemos ya los resultados de una falta de toda una serie de servicios y que nos impiden realmente estructurar bien el país. If the Catalan industrialist has always supported autonomy, today's workers feel differently. Most of them are non-Catalan. In Corberó's factory, as many as 80%. They come to Catalonia from poorer parts of Spain for a job and better pay. These workers are outsiders in a community which is in the process of asserting its differences from others. Integration is a problem which autonomy can only make more difficult. In the industrial zone around Barcelona, the communities are largely non-Catalan. The Barrio Seat is where the workers of the Seat car factory live, in housing provided by the company. It's a very closed community with its own shops, bars, social facilities and its own school. 
85% of the SEAT workers come from other parts of Spain, mostly the south, and few of them speak any Catalan. They are known as emigrants, and the problems of integration for them are considerable. The Catalan headmistress of a local school came to work in this district because she was concerned about these problems. Maria Teresa Codina. The predominance of non-Catalan workers in the factories creates a kind of class distinction. Spanish is the language of the shop floor, Catalan the language of the boardroom. But the managers are aware of how divisive this is and insist on Spanish as the official language of the factory. But it's still a powerful barrier between worker and employer. So learning the language is an important first step in integration. The teaching of Catalan in all schools began in 1978. It should make integration for second generation immigrants much easier than for their parents. As Senora Codina explains. El emigrante piensa uno cambiando, accediendo a una cultura y pareciéndose, adquiriendo la cultura exterior de la, de la comunidad que le recibe, de Cataluña. Pero entonces, lo que pasa es que deja de profundizar en su propia cultura. Abandona las cosas que tenía, que eran las suyas, que eran las que le daban seguridad, que le daban identidad. Entonces, muy a menudo, no llega a tener ni una cosa ni otra. The assertion of Catalan autonomy may have aggravated problems of integration. But then the association of different regions into one Spanish nation has always been a problem. In the past, the answer has frequently been dictatorship. Now, other solutions are possible. Nosotros creemos que una España, un Estado español de tipo federal, sería el que mejor resolvería esta problemática de los distintos pueblos que integran el Estado español. Una federación que nosotros vemos abierta, incluso a Portugal, para que comprendiera todos los pueblos de la península. Y que vemos también como un paso hacia esta Europa unida que nosotros deseamos ver realizada un día. Una Europa que sea una auténtica federación de pueblos. Ahora bien, somos realistas y en el momento presente, por una serie de razones, este Estado federal no es posible aún en España. Por tanto, aceptamos el Estado de tipo autonómico, que es el que define hoy la situación española. Un Estado unitario, pero compatible con la autonomía de todos los pueblos que integran el Estado español.